Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now we have an amazing guest with us in the studio, someone I consider my colleague, not just as a lawyer, but as a media personality. Now from having dealt with cancer and having her leg amputated, she's risen beyond all of this to become a lawyer, becoming a very well-recognized on-air personality, the founder of Amputees United, and also an inspiration on social media. She's also a lover of white sneakers, hence my wearing white sneakers on TV today. I am joined with someone who is our latest author in Yay. Nigeria. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. How Welcome. does that make you feel? Having added, you know, after all your accolades, you have author at here. I haven't that. even started. That's mm -hmm. I think that when you hear people say, I have not started, it always sounds cliche. But I feel like when you evolve, you know that there are several parts to you that you know there's so much more you want to lay your hands on. Whether or not it succeeds is a different ballgame entirely, but you want history to have it on record that, oh, and then she tried to do a t-shirt company, and then she tried to do a hair business, and then she tried to do a car business. So when you eventually pass on, you know that you actually did die empty. So it sounds good to hear, but there's so much more that I know I can and I will do. But nevertheless, I'm enjoying to um, applaud myself and also own every moment of my life. So my newest achievement is the, you know, the book part. And um, I'm very elated. I was just telling you that, you know, if anyone had told me that it was this hard to write a book and then do a launch and then have your book in different places across Nigeria and then you're trying to look for how to get it across West Africa and then you're trying to put it on different platforms across the world. I, and that, you know, I never knew that this was gonna happen, but I'm excited. How long did it take to write the book? It's a 13-year journey, um, but I think the experience is even longer than that because I, you know, shared in detail my child, you know, childhood, growing up, what it meant like being an only child, um, growing up with all of that and transiting to secondary university and, uh, of course, the amputation and becoming a lawyer, um, getting into media, and moving, taking a break from media for a bit, what I'm up to now. And so it's, it's almost um, all my life, but I can say categorically, it's been maybe like um, eight years that I knew that it's time to write a book, but I didn't know when I was ready to write the book. I made several attempts. 2015, I first, it was the first time I tried to make an attempt and I just shut it down. But last year, October up until now, and I'm like, okay, God. Um, 2017, I keep forgetting we're in a new year, 2017, <laughs> October till now, and um, yeah, I'm here. So it's, it's, it's humbling. It's, it's a humbling, humbling, extremely humbling process. And your, your life is one that is one of inspiration. I, I dare say that anyone who's followed you and followed your journey, you know, I know the identity I met when I joined the company is not the same person I I'm know not. now. You have evolved have over time, <laughs> you know, and it's beautiful to see your journey. And you're basically the gift that keeps on mm. giving. I'm not going to ask you, you know, the story of your amputation. I know a bit of the story and I can't wait to read your book to see the rest of the story. But what I want to ask you is, I know that sometimes we often hear that your pain is not for you, it's for a bigger purpose. And there are many people that you've met along the line that have also been amputated or have faced amputation which one would you say has stood out for you of all your many encounters wow just, i know that it's going to be a difficult question but just it pick is. one and share with us wow i think just very recently someone sent me a dm on instagram and asked me how um i was if i had been to luma rock it, it doesn't stand out as the most outstanding experience but it stands out as the most recent and you know i there i was oh why before i even typed why and then he goes oh his wife is an amputee and he's not Nigerian, that um, she, she saw my pictures and she said she could do it. I'm like, sure, you know, I've been to Adorawaii in Oyo State. I went to Ulumorup and I got to the top of both of them. So, of course, let her do it. I was excited. And for me, I don't know if they're resident in Nigeria. I don't know if they came on holiday. I didn't ask all of that. But to know that someone is somewhere with her family and will see my picture and say, oh, if this person like me could get to the top of Ulumor, um, um, mounting or Luma Rock, I can do it. And when that happened in 2017, I know the number of people who sent me messages. I've been to Luma Rock and I never got to the top, but I saw your picture and I made sure I'm going back to get to the top. I did it because in those moments, I just wanted to do it. It was something I wanted to. 2017, I realized I had not been anywhere in Nigeria apart from Lagos, Yondo, Oshun, 
and Abuja. I hadn't got to or sev um, several other places. So I said, you know what, you got to be intentional about it. And I joined the group, Social Perfectors, and we've, you know, toured across Nigeria and Ulumar Rock and the other mountain um, were the two places that I ascended. And just, it, it, to me, it just made me realize that there are many things we have in Nigeria, we don't know the value. You know, we keep talking tourism and tourism and tourism. I got to the mountain and I realized this, there are only two suspended water bodies in the entire world, and one is in Nigeria, and I was just getting there. So that man's experience for me stood out the most because they had seen my picture and wherever it was they were in the world and they said, you know what, because she can, so can you. And that's one of the things that humbles me the most about my experience. I don't wake up wanting to you know, motivate anyone or wanting to push anyone, very honestly. For people who know me, I just do me. And I realize that in doing me, people are inspired. It, you know, people just get, ah, my life can be way worse. But look at her. She doesn't have any. I have cares in the world, let's be very honest. But I think that my, my personality is also very, um, by nature, excited. So it kind of helped me through the journey. And um, every single day I wake up, because some people just feel like competition is the only thing that I, I you know, I, the only challenge I have to face. Well, I face traffic. I face, you know, money issues. I face economy. But then I just realized that some days I just want to stay in bed. And like, you know what, you guys, today I just miss my right leg. Let me just shut down. And it happens. I'm grateful for the people around me who allow me to be vulnerable in those moments. And the days I'm excited and I can change the world, I'm like, yeah, if I have energy, let me arrange a wardrobe for you. <laughs> so I've, I've learned to own my story. When I'm excited, I'm excited. When I want to break down, I break down. But I don't stay there for so long. That's one thing I've also learned. Um, I eat a lot. I, good food excites me like olive. <laughs> So once I get there, I just Someone want to get out, me. get out, get out, and just do all of that. So yeah, um, I'm just owning every part of my life story. It's not easy, mm. I can tell you. Um, there are many daunting questions, the reality, but taking one day at a time. Okay, you. so um, speaking of vulnerability, and you mentioned being weak, what is it like for you being weak? Because I, I know their time. Yeah, oh, sure. You know, I, I, when people say, oh, is someone has once said, oh, come and teach us how to be inspired. But I, don't, I, I can't teach you how to be inspired. I can only share with you what happens to me. And in those moments, maybe it would it, to reignite you to move on. Um, I'm blessed with people around me that can allow me be who I am and not um, take on a cloak that society wants to put on me and say, oh, you're a super woman. So in the moments where I want to have an outburst, for instance, at the mall, I, I then remember, ah, they call me superwoman, behave yourself. Or, but if I'm being cheated at the moment, if somebody is in, um, impeding on my rights, I, I should be able to express myself. And in those moments, I'm telling you categorically, this is wrong. Whether it's wrong to me as a human first or wrong as a person living with disability in Nigeria, I have learned to express myself. I have learned to open up to the people around me, wherever it is they are in the world, whether we are together physically in Lagos or wherever we are, or virtually, thankfully, technology makes it easy. I will just pick up, you know, on Monday, I had one of the moments, I almost broke down. But in that, I was almost picking my phone to call a friend, saying that this book thing is taking a toll on me. And I remember sitting in the car and saying to myself, you know, the, this capacity, and I literally had the Holy Spirit tell me, remember who your father is. And I can tell you that from Monday till now, there are many things that have happened. I'm like, no, this got to be God. Because it's too much of a coincidence not to be orchestrated by someone. Mm. It can't just be me, I'm showing up somewhere, or somebody I took a selfie with one day, or someone I was nice to before. No, there are several other people that have been nice to other people that didn't deem it fit to help them. Mm. But I've learned to own my weakness. I've learned to express my weakness. I've learned to know the things that trigger me to be weak. And I've learned to just run away from them. If you, somebody that's always asking me unnecessary questions, hey, so when will you marry? When will you? Once I see you like this, I avoid, that's your, you know, no, you, you know us now. Oh, no, do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> Where were you born? No, all of that, I just run away from let's even Let's even look at how you deal with um, criticism. First of all, I must say you do an amazing work with regards to activism on your page. Oh, wow. You know that whenever you see an ill, you're quick to speak about it. You're, if you are doing nonsense He's in Lagos, me. just pray that Adelita is not around <laughs> with her camera because she will film you and she will put you on she social media. Do the right thing. Exactly. So it's amazing what work that you do on your page. So well done on that. But I'm sure that there have been times you also get criticized. Oh, yes. Yeah, sure. How do you deal with criticism? Um, it's part of life. You know, let's be very honest. And... Um, if, if, if you don't know how to accept criticism, I think that it's, you're, you're not being true to yourself. 
Of course, there's, there, there, there are constructive criticism and there's the point blank negative one. So one thing I know with social media, for instance, was I used to want to block or delete messages or comments. But now I allow you, I'll slide into your DM. I'll educate you. And if I say that you're failing to be educated, then I'll block you and tell you you earned it. Okay. Okay. What are the three most common um, challenges people with disability face? Access in to infra infrastructural accessibility, um, health, and then transportation. Okay. All right. Before we end up end this conversation, we can't do it without talking about your book. I yeah, I brought you guys a gift. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much. Your book really looks lovely. Thank and you. And you titled it A Day My Day. name. Yes. What, what's, you know, I know it's your story. Yes. What should we expect in the book? How many chapters? Oh, well, you know, I never even bother to check how many chapters there are. There are about nine <laughs> chapters in there, I think eight or nine. Um, it's just my story of who it is I am becoming. And it's my story, I, you know, I subtitled it, has her story, your movie, his glory. Because people think they know my story. Some people keep watching me, that's the movie part. But they fail to realize that it's all to God's glory. So um, it's a story of vulnerability, of strength, of family, of relationship, of having the role of a father in a child's upbringing. I talk extensively about my, my father. My mom, and, my mom and I, our relationship, finding God, you know, finding friends you can be with, career choices. Um, when the career doesn't go the way you plan it to go. So it's so much on childhood. It talks about being a tomboy and several other things. Speaking so. about vulnerability, some people are afraid to show their vulnerability because they think that, you know, you show your scars to the world and the world will pick on it and make it even worse. Were you at any point scared whilst writing that you were sharing a little too much that will come back to bite you in the butt? I'm very glad that I, I, I shut out the world. I learned to shut out the world years ago. I've, I'm, I've learned to be me. I've learned to not care about what one person says, you know, or keeps talking about me. If I have a problem with you, I'm bold enough to reach out to you to say, oh, I hear that you say this about me. What's it about? Because what, what's now beginning to happen is that we, a lot of us are now believing so much in there, the group of people sitting down talking it about has. you who do not want you to excel and all of that. It's, it, they may exist, but to be very honest to both of you, I don't see them. And I'm being genuine. I don't see them, so I don't even notice when all these things happen. And if only you can be intentional about building yourself, and there's the people around you as well. People around me don't have time for haters. What's that? Nobody has all the, or oh, let them be around to see your success. I mean, I saw your post on Instagram, like, shut up. All of you walking away from toxic people in 2019, we are tired, shut up. I cracked up when I saw that. But thank you so much. Thank Adrienne you for Ike. having me. Your life is such thank an inspiration. You. And we wish you the best as your book is being launched on Sunday, as well as your foundation. Yes. And PT's United. United Initiative, yes. All right, we'll come back to wrap up with you, but let's find out what's happening today in history. And today in history is the World Braille Day. I'm pretty sure you want to know what, what that means. The World Braille Day is annually celebrated on the 4th of January. The birthday of Braille inventor Louis Braille. And the day recognizes the contribution of Louis Braille in helping blind and visually impaired people to read and write. All right. I didn't care. Well, before we let you go, finally, yes. what would you say is the dream for your book? Where do you see this book? Let me give you a dash to tell me first. Oh, so what are we going to share it? I don't know. I think we'll take one mercy, one mercy reads it first and then passes it on oh, to the other this person. This is such a lovely What's the dream of my book? I think that one thing that Tito Idakola shared with me was never forget the messenger. Hmm. And the messenger is God. He's the one that has placed it in my heart to write the book. Um, it would be good to have, oh, you guys, I sold one million copies. Hmm. But I think that that's far from what the message is about. Okay. My dream and hope is that it gets into as many hands as it possibly can so people understand that it's okay to fail. It's okay to not have a plan. And wow. it's okay to just stay in that space where you trust no one but God. Mm. I didn't care. Thank you so much. I feel like I could talk to you forever, but mm. unfortunately, we have to draw the curtain on um, the, today's show. We hope that you've been inspired with Adenike's story and as well as being inspired by inspired by Glory Gloria does reminding you to network. So please pick up your phone, look through those contacts, contact them again. You just might be re exposing yourself for good business opportunities in the year 2019. Remember to follow us on all social media platforms. Follow me at Oliver Emody. Follow Glory. Follow <laughs> Esther, Esther, Esther Wanko underscore official is mine. And follow Adenike. Adenike Oyetunde. 
And she's also behind, you know, Gratitude Challenge. So you can follow... Um, Gratitude Jar Challenge on Instagram. Where you have something to be grateful for every day. And then Amputees United, your foundation, how can people follow that as um, well? At Amputees United is the fastest way on Instagram and on Twitter, Amputees United underscore. All right, for more information with Gloria as well, follow, follow her at Inspired by Gloria. We'll be back again next week, Monday. We understand that it's the weekend. Like, I like to wrap up on Fridays. I say, do not drink and drive. Turn up with sense. To enjoy more of this, our Ugon Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.